Good evening. It's so good that we can do this again. It's been a while. The last time I recorded a video was at what I thought was the end of the uh, coronavirus uh, pandemic scare that everybody was going through. Uh, that was, uh, I be believe, at the very beginning of May, and I did go off to, to work and uh, have been doing that. Um, a lot of people uh, in some states still continue on lockdown. Businesses continue to open uh, little by little. Um, things were kind of dying down with that. So uh, if that's all that was going on, then there'd probably be no reason uh, to, uh, to, to speak again. But um, the whole world's on fire now because on, I believe it was May 25th, there was... Um, a man by the name of George Floyd. And I'm going to go into a lot of detail, though you probably already know all about it. Uh, but I end up uh, taking a long time sometimes to edit these videos and get them uploaded. So I'm going to go ahead and go into detail just to refresh your memory when the time comes uh, that you're uh, viewing this video. But uh, George Floyd is a, uh, was a black man uh, living in Minneapolis. And um, he was uh, detained by police uh, supposedly because he was, I think, passing a counterfeit bill. Um, I don't know a lot of the facts. Uh, I'll be honest with you, I've told you this before. I don't always uh, look up statistics and facts because really, I wanna give you my opinion about what I do know or at least think I know uh, because I find that a lot of times if I do a lot of research on this other the writer's bias uh, ends up seeping into what I read and I don't want to adopt their way of thinking I want to give you my way of thinking if you want to know their way of thinking you can go directly to, to, to what my sources would be but anyway, uh, supposedly he was passing a counterfeit bill. They detained him. Um, they uh, got him down on the ground uh, alongside a police car. And one of the men was kneeling on the man's neck for nearly nine minutes. He complained that he was unable to breathe. Um, bystanders were... Um, speaking with the police officer saying, hey, look, the man is saying he can't breathe. Now, what's disturbing it to me is that people are recording this, and yes, they are trying to reason with the police officers, and I do appreciate that, but I kind of wonder why people didn't get involved, but perhaps the people didn't know that it was gonna come to what it came to, and that is that George Floyd ended up dying. Um, they say he died at the hospital. Who knows? He might have died at the scene. We won't really ever know. Um, that might just be a, uh, a, that might be said, may have been said just to kind of mitigate the circumstances. And there really isn't any mitigating circumstances. You cannot kneel on a person's neck and cut off their airway. Now, if you want to try to come up with some mitigating circumstances, there was an autopsy. There was two autopsies, one conducted by the family. And um, the, the, the other autopsy, which I think was um, uh, paid for by the city or the county or whatever, um, says that he had uh, methamphetamines in his system at the time, and uh, I believe fentanyl. And that, and, oh, and he also had coronavirus. And all of this uh, could have contributed to his difficulty in breathing, but that is why you don't kneel on someone's neck. Because oftentimes people that are uh, doing something wrong and getting into trouble, a lot of times they are drug abusers. I'm not saying that Mr. Floyd was, but a lot of times that is the case. And these drugs can uh, affect people's ability to breathe. So the last thing you wanna do is impede that. So, um, I, I, you know, I was very angry about it. I wanted the man uh, uh, arrested. And I think by the time I heard about the story, uh, the police officer that had killed Mr. Floyd had already been terminated 
and uh, arrested and charged with, I don't know what degrees of murder, but charged. Um, there were three other police officers involved. Two of them, I guess, were also kneeling on Mr. Floyd, not on his neck, but uh, probably on uh, his pelvis area and on his ankles. And then there was a fourth police officer that was just standing there looking and saying nothing. So I wanted them all charged. And uh, they have since been, which is, which is great, because I believe they are accessories uh, to the crime. So uh, the uh, police officer that uh, was kneeling on his neck, I, I hope he does. I hope he um, is, is tried and convicted and goes away for a very long time, because this is something that should not be tolerated. So as far as I'm concerned, this has been addressed. But now, like I said, the whole world is on fire because uh, that's not enough. Uh, now you have people uh, protesting in the streets. It has spread from Minneapolis where the problem originated. It has uh, uh, spread to other cities. It has spread to other countries. And uh, there is riots and looting going on and people's properties being destroyed. And I really don't think that does any bit of good. Um, and let me read you um, a Facebook post um, because um, I, I, I'm not into conspiracy theories. Uh, this is just something that I came up with on my own and I actually uh, researched it and um, nobody has, um, nobody's come up with a theory quite like mine. So you'll only hear this here. So let me begin. I, I wrote this on uh, June 2nd, which will be a week ago tomorrow. I said, let me begin by saying I have no evidence or any source I can point to. Still, I wonder, is it possible George Floyd lives? We can all agree that he should, and what a relief it would be if he does. Is it even possible that he, the onlookers, and police staged his arrest? I can have my doubts, but that's all they are, and so I cannot deny the facts as presented. Even so, I find the timing and reaction so eerily ironic. We are beginning to slowly emerge from home to reopen our businesses and return to work. Some of our leaders have been under pressure, but reluctant to begin reopening. Then this tragedy happened, which led to justified protests. But the rioters are not justified, nor do I believe are related. Throwing bricks through windows and running off with electronics brings no one back from the dead or punishes a cop behind bars. All right, he's already behind bars. I have seen videos of pallets of bricks and the bricks being used by looters. Who is supplying the bricks? Why are the police standing by while people's businesses are destroyed? Is it to keep those businesses from reopening? Is the president going to be blamed? Is that a way to remove him from office come election day in five months? I don't think Vice President Biden is well enough to debate or campaign. Is this a way to keep the president from campaigning as well? The president's America first approach is rejected by globalists who seek a more universal form of government and many of which also hate capitalism. If enough of us blame civil unrest and a bad economy on the president, he may not get another four years. And that may explain why this is happening. If I am wrong in my assumptions, what else explains these, these riots? What else does? And, and what's appalling is that there are um, celebrities now contributing to, um, funds to try to help these looters out of prison. 
um, they need to do the same thing um, to the businesses who are in no way connected to what happened in Minneapolis. You know, I, I work in downtown Orlando. Like I said, I've returned to work and I've seen the marchers marching down Orange Avenue on their way to City Hall. And I'm thinking, you know, the mayor can walk down the steps of City Hall, confront the pro protesters and say, look, I hear you. I totally agree with you. There has to be change. Um, however, I'm the mayor of Orlando, not the mayor of Minneapolis. There's nothing I can do but agree with you. So why do something like that if it's not getting you anywhere? Now, I think it makes a lot of people feel good about themselves. Um, I think it makes people feel like they belong to something great. I think it's an opportunity for a lot of people to take pictures and uh, post selfies on social media, showing the world that they participated. But I really don't think it amounts to more than that. Like I said, the police officer has been arrested. So have the others. Um, hopefully they'll be up, put on trial. Hopefully they will get a fair trial. Um, but uh, hopefully they will all do some time. That has got to happen. And that's not, not to say that uh, this doesn't happen elsewhere throughout the country. I mean, this sort of thing probably does happen from time to time. And that just happened to be on video. Um, and uh, it enraged us all, rightfully so. But now the whole memory of uh, Mr. Floyd has been hijacked by all these looters, uh, which... Um, supposedly is uh, Black Lives Matter. So let me go ahead and move on to, I know there's another Facebook post that I uh, wrote recently. I want, uh, uh, this is an interesting one. I can't believe it's right season already. I still have my COVID decorations up. Um, that's a little joke that I posted on Friday the 5th. Um, but I did also want to get into how uh, the president um, has reacted. Now we know uh, one thing that happened uh, during during these riots is that a church uh, very close to the White House uh, was set on fire and uh, he had um, some park cleared so he could walk through the park and uh, take a picture in front of the church. Um, I believe in support of the church holding up the Bible and People went nuts. I don't. I think it's harmless. It's it's not a big deal. Um, it was said that um, the um, protesters that had to be cleared were um, uh, rubber bullets was um, uh, set off on them, and other things were done that uh, I guess put them in danger. But that 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 wasn't the case. And they were protesters that were warned. They had to had to clear the area and they refused to do so. So some action had to be taken. But anyway, uh, over the weekend, um, I posted this on Facebook. So let me, uh, let me first actually play a little audio for you. Equal justice under the law must mean that every American receives equal treatment in every encounter with law enforcement, regardless of race, color, gender, or creed. They have to receive fair treatment from law enforcement. They have to receive it. We all saw what happened last week. We can't let that happen. Hopefully George is looking down right now and saying there's a great thing that's happening for our country. There's a great day for him. It's a great day for everybody. This is a great day for everybody. This is a great, great day in terms of equality. Let me just go ahead and read you the post. Um... I wrote, this is why I did not want Donald Trump to be president in 2015 and 2016. He didn't make sense then and does not make sense in this speech. This cannot be discounted as fake news this time. This video comes from his Twitter account. I listened to everything leading up to this hideous statement that George Floyd would be saying, quote, this is a great thing that's happening for our country, end quote. What thing, until that statement, 
what he had been saying was that he participated in the creation of opportunity zones, which will be great for the African uh, American community. No arguments here. Um, but that's done. George Floyd lived to see that. So what's happening now? He said that every American, regardless of race, has to be treated the same by law enforcement. No kidding. Your statement is a great thing. Big whoop. Uh, this is how people just chalk it up to him meaning that George Floyd would think the new job numbers for May is a great thing. It is not what he meant. But what did he mean then? He needs statements prepared and needs to read them off a teleprompter because he is not as good at speaking extemporaneously as he thinks he is. So the president um, gave a speech and uh, he was just going off in all different directions, talking about different things. And um, he was talking about some of the things that that he did that has been good for the African-American uh, community. And then he started talking about, um, you know, George Floyd um, looking down and being, I guess, prideful about what's going on. You, you haven't, you meaning the president, he, he hasn't promoted any, well, he has promoted the idea of everybody being treated equally, but well, that's not, people, people that are protesting will agree with that, but they want so much more than that. And he didn't offer anything. So why say that at all? It's just going to tick people off. And uh, when he says things like this, it just, just creates more problems. Um, I, I know he's damned if he does, he's damned if he doesn't. But all I'm saying is you got to be a little bit more careful in what you say because people are going to attack you whether it's something good or something bad. So you might as well say, you, you might as well make it good so that people like me are a little bit more inclined to defend you. Now, supposedly the New York Post, um, not the New York Post, sorry, um, the Washington Post uh is the one responsible for circulating the idea that when the president said what he said, uh, he was referring to what George Floyd would think of the new economic numbers for May, which are good and that's great, um, despite you know the fact that we're we're all just slowly reopening in May. But um, I don't believe that's what the president was referring to. But he didn't make that clear. And that's why I'm saying when you, when, you, when you don't make things clear, you give people wiggle room to spin what you're saying. Um, but anyway, I don't want to keep this going any longer. Um, I think I was effective in saying everything that I had um, set out to uh, tell you today. And uh, hopefully um, you agreed. And if you disagreed, I'd like to know what your thoughts are. So um, I appreciate you listening and watching as well. And um, uh, unless all hell breaks loose again, I don't foresee uh, recording any more videos uh, throughout the summer. Um, but in the fall, uh, I, I may uh, start doing this again with some regularity, not like I ever did in the past. But this is an election year, and uh, the election season will be heating up right around then. And um, I know that's something we're all going to want to talk about. So uh, thanks again for your time. And until we meet again, have a good evening. I do not agree with defunding police. We have to defend police. Punish the bad ones, but defend good ones. Defunding the police will increase response time, so when you call 911, you may have to wait much longer for police to respond. That can be the difference between life and death for those of us who cannot afford 24-7 bodyguards. Police funds are needed and should not be used to fund social services for mental health, domestic violence, and homelessness. While those problems lead to crime, money to combat those problems can be raised elsewhere.